Hi Anna, uh, thank you for this opportunity, platform and your dedication. Uh, I'd also like to thank everybody that's contributed so far, it's uh, helped, uh, helped me enormously, thank you. Uh, my name's Steve, I'm 59 and living in Sheffield. My present occupation is research. Uh, how has this Wu flu scandemic uh, affected me personally? Well, profoundly. On, the, on Thursday the 23rd of April, uh, my mum my died. I was fortunate in that uh, mum was at home in her own bedroom and I was by her side when she took her last breath. Sadly, this is not the case for a multitude of, of people. I am and will always be extremely thankful for, uh, for, uh, for, for that uh, opportunity. Um, if the above wasn't bad enough, I was verbally crucified for travelling from Sheffield to London to be with my dying mother and um, even physically assaulted, all by so-called uh, family members. Needless to say, uh, it was and still is total shite. Um, Mum's GP didn't help either. Four days after Mum died, so that would be the Monday, um, in a telephone conversation with her um, as to um, uh, Mum's um, cause, of, cause of death, um, she introduced herself, explained the purpose of the conversation, and then came out with the uh, dreaded word uh, coronavirus. Well, I stopped her immediately and uh, basically said to her that if she intended on uh, going down this road and uh, putting COVID or coronavirus uh, on mum's death, death certificate, I want the coroner involved and this conversation will end now and uh, will not be discussed any further until the coroner is, uh, uh, has come up with his report, etc. and all the tests, right tests have been done that. She started a little bit and uh, said something about... Um, um, uh, symptoms. Um, when I just said to her, I said, well, the, uh, symptoms, That's even that's not right because she has palliative care four times a day. Uh, the district nurse comes in at least once a week um, and should, should my mother have had any symptoms um, over the past four months, five months, um, I'm sure somebody would have noticed and would have, uh, it would have been put down in the paperwork. So anyway. In the end, uh, she put down, you know, what mum did die of, uh, which was um, diverticular disease, uh, which is uh, basically causes um, sickness and diarrhea, so disease of the stomach, uh, and angioimmunoblastic and B cell lymphoma. Mum did have cancer. She also had a lot of other uh, underlying conditions as well. But so we got that sorted out. I don't think that. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not saying for definite, but I, it seems to me that a lot of people who have um, had conversations about death certificates, etc., have just accepted the fact that, yeah, all right, you know, the doctor knows best. No, they don't. You need to challenge everything they say because at the moment they are not um, performing to the Hippocratic Act, which is to look after people and do the best they can for people and save lives not kill people as they are doing at the moment by keeping quiet and I find that very disturbing. So anyway, uh, that's a bit about how I'm, I'm affected uh, and obviously that's still ongoing. Um, you know, I've noticed that, you know, my depression has increased. Lots of stuff, you know, and also, uh, you know, what they do to our kids, you know, the psychology, the physical damage, the spiritual damage that they're doing to our children now and <laughs> for the very long-term future if this carries on any much longer. Okay, so now I'd like to share with you some facts uh, and what I believe could be a possible solution to our current situation. So we'll start with um, testing. Testing, RT-PCR test, which is a reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction test, was developed by Dr. Kerry Mullis, uh, in the 1980s. He also won the Nobel Peace Prize um, for uh, discovering this. Um, it is, an, according to him, it is not an appropriate testing methodology that would indicate anything that was viable. Quote, Dr. Mullis said 
that you cannot use the RT-CPR test, RT-PCR test, sorry, for diagnosing a viral or bacterial or any other infectious type of pathology. Well, I've in the research I've, I've, I've done so far, uh, in the material I've read, in the video interviews I've watched, uh, etc., the um, the test is is completely inaccurate. Uh, one one it can be amplified, so it will detect absolutely anything in anything, and probably you know you could test a, a, a stone and find coronavirus in it. And also as well, the uh, virus um, hasn't been properly properly uh, purified, which apparently is a gold standard to um, uh, identifying um, bacteria, viruses, etc. Um, so therefore, they don't even know what they're testing for. So that's that on testing. Um, and then I'd like to um, just go into some uh, some facts and figures. Uh, so as of yesterday morning, um, uh, approximately 10 o'clock I did this research, um, the population of the world was 7.8 billion and rising. Um, in terms of COVID, uh, 22 million 69,420 cases uh, have been registered. This was this morning, uh, yesterday morning, don't forget. Uh, 14 million 807,667 recovered. Of that, 777,751 people have died, which equals 0.0100% of the world population. 7.8 plus billion people, 0 0.010, sorry, 0.0100% of the world population. If you look at deaths per million of population, it equals 99.8 people per million uh, have died so far, uh, up to yesterday morning of this virus. Let's round it up to 100 people per one million people out of 77.8 plus billion people doesn't make any sense the recovery rate i've been looking at um been looking at this now since uh, february and all the way along the recovery rate has been by the who world hoax organization um cdc public health england uh, another one that i use is world o meter has consistently been, the recovery rate has consistently been 99.5 uh, to 0.9%. So let's average it at 99.5% at the lowest figure I've ever seen. Why do we need a virus? Why do we need a vaccine for that? Why do we need to be shut down the way we are for a recovery rate so high? So, uh, in terms of a few other little figures that, that might put things into perspective, again, this is all from yesterday morning around about 10, 10, 30. Death from hunger, death from hunger, starvation, etc. are yesterday morning was 12,700 per day. Per day. Not per year. Not so far this year. 12,700 per day of hunger. In, just of hunger. Deaths caused, deaths caused by water-related diseases uh, was 531,445 so far this year. Uh, deaths from seasonal flu, 308,065 so far this year. And bearing in mind the flu season and common cold season is will soon be upon us again. Deaths by cancer. 5,183,130 so far this year. So far this year. We haven't, we've never shut down for cancer. We've never shut down for the flu. We've never shut down because people are dying of hunger, etc. And the last one that I've got is road traffic accident fatalities. <laughs> this, is, this is mad. This is 851,948 people so far this year. That's more than this, this so-called COVID. And I don't believe that 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 number is correct. It seems too high because, as we know, and as as people other people have proven, and I've proven as well in the research I've done, that the figures aren't right. People who are dying, not of uh, this disease, have been recorded with this disease. You know, fruit for crying out loud, comes positive with with COVID. 
etc etc so those are those are some figures to get your head around etc right then so now um, let's go on to uh, um, in terms of legislation so recently the government introduced the following to the coronavirus act 2020 section 51 schedule 21 part 2 paragraph 6 don't get me wrong the whole of coronavirus coronavirus act is scary but this has just been introduced recently powers to remove persons to a place suitable for screening and assessment this includes your children with or without your consent they can come into your home decide that you have uh, you have either symptoms or they'll uh, they want you the, they want to test you for this um, scandemic etc and they can remove you from your house take you to a concentration camp and imprison you and falsely uh, falsely and forcefully test you to uh, determine whether you uh, uh, are positive or not and if you refuse to have the testing done they will keep you there for 14 days and if you refuse again they will continue to keep you there and, uh, 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 until you basically say yes I will have the test and then should you test positive which I reckon you will uh, because it, you know it's being scammed in that direction you're, you're gonna stay there you're gonna stay there you know in for how long who knows just look at New Zealand just look at Melbourne you know it's ridiculous so my idea for possibly um, putting uh, a lot of wrongs to right. Okay, so I'm now going to talk about the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta is a common law document which came, uh, which came into being in 1215. It was a contract, not a, an agreement, a contract between the knights, the barons, cl the clergy and the townspeople and the king. Okay? In 1297, the model government confirmed Magna Carta into statute law. Much of this statute has since been repealed. But, this is the good bit, yet while the Parliament can repeal or amend any act of, of Parliament, i.e. statute, Parliament was not a party to the original common law contract, was not a party to the original common law contract therefore any amendment or repeal is unlawful uh, and thus its original provisions remain intact remember the contract was between the knights the barons the clergy and the townspeople and the king parliament was not involved the um, magna carta is still very much a valid document so I'll give you some examples now of the Magna Carta, how it's been used, etc. In 2001, four hereditary peers invoked ancient rights as a last attempt to save fundamental freedoms and birthrights in the name of British constitutional democracy and law. This was reported by the Telegraph worldwide on both the day before and on the day of the invocation. This invocation was Clause 61. Clause 61 was used in Liverpool on the 7th of May 2020. I repeat, the 7th of May 2020. Uh, in regards to uh, the council and, uh, um, and their misuse of power, etc, etc. If you want to see the complete article, uh, if you go to enchantedpath.com, the full article is there and will give you the, all the details and also the details of um, how the Act was used. The Clause, clause 61 was used. Um, then, here's an extraction from, uh, the, uh, from Clause 61 of uh, the Magna Carta. Quote, it is our duty to step in and require the monarch to uphold their contract with the people. Sovereignty lies with the people and the monarch is bound by that oath to hold an out of control government to account. I'll repeat all that because it's important. It is our duty to step in and require the monarch to uphold their contract with the people. 
sovereignty lies with the people and the monarch is bound by that oath to hold an out-of-control government to account. Well, I think in my simple-minded understanding of that, I believe that our government is out of control and that the monarch is not fulfilling her responsibilities because it is passed from uh, down the line of monarchy from King John when the Magna Carta was, was signed. So I think that that is an avenue that we could go. Obviously, I'm not au fait enough with the law, etc., etc. I've read it. I've... I've read um, how you uh, how the procedure works, etc. I'm not capable of doing that. I don't believe. I, but I will. I am willing to help anybody that wants to go down that road. And I believe that that is a road that we can use. But obviously, you know, other people are more intelligent than I am in this in these matters. And um, that's how I read it, and that's how I understand it. And I'm reporting. I'm reporting what I've read verbatim. Okay. So to finish off. If you go on EnchantedPath.com, as well as the article about Liverpool, there's also information on Clause 61. And for Magna Carta, in, in its entirety, if you go to LearnCommonLaw.today, everything is in there. It's layman's language. Someone as daft as me who you know, can fix a car and teach people how to ride a motorcycle in my previous occupation um, can, you know, can understand it, uh, etc., so um, there you go. That's what that's what I found. That's my research, and uh, I believe it all to be true. It's all online. It's all uh, in the public domain and uh, checkable. Once again, a massive thanks to to you, Anna, for the platform and your dedication, and to everyone that's contributed. You've all been a huge help. Thank you very much. Goodbye.